I want to do like a 101 on just what is an electric motor and then we'll, we'll dive into it. Right. No. Yeah, we're idiots at Hoonigan, so we don't even know. So yeah. I am essentially calling internal combustion engine yeah. a motor, which yeah. is technically not it. Right. So yeah. like from my understanding, a motor is essentially nothing more than a series of magnets and coils going around each other. So you have like a rotor yeah. and a coil right. that, are, that are essentially, essentially ro rotating right. around right. each other, right? Yeah, you have yeah. several different types. You've got brushed and brushless. You have synchronous, asynchronous. Those exactly. are kind of the general classifications. but uh, in total, they all have one thing in common, their magnetic drive. You're either creating a magnetic attraction or actually a repulsion in the case of like a reluctance motor. But, and then you create, essentially you want to create like alternating drive and reduction to essentially start right. getting everything right. turning, right? And so all the terms that are familiar in a combustion engine like timing is critical in a motor. So a brushed motor has fixed timing, so they're set to run in one direction more efficiently. Okay. And what makes a brushless motor so efficient is now your field, you can kind of move and you can time within your microcontroller, within the actual motor okay. controller itself. So you have, you know, this is like the VTEC basically, yep, right? yep, the yep. timing of, of motors. And now uh, it, it's a wonderful time because technology is moving so fast. This is, you know, an AC induction motor, it's brushless. Uh, Tesla reached out to a company called AC Propulsion back in the day where a guy named Al Caccone, they bought his, uh, intellectual property to okay. build this motor and now they've actually just discontinued this. This induction motor is no longer in production because they're using an AC synchronous reluctance motor now Okay. and you have a much higher efficiency. Okay. Now we talk about efficiency. Can you hold for audio real quick? Asshole! <laughs> wow, so disrespectful to us. That's here. the Tesla Nino <laughs> owner. <laughs> wow, he's, he runs, he's like He's offsetting his carbon footprint internally. We don't give a fuck about carbon. We just care about fucking like, <laughs> kicking shit up, right? What's this car? What is fucking carbon? Exactly. If right? it's in tires, I got bad news. We're letting exactly. it we're, we're, we're blowing that <laughs> off too. So now this motor's actually been discontinued. So when you talk about a more right. efficient motor. Right. So, uh, you know, they're kind of battling headlines and bullet points to sell their cars. And one of those things, the most important is range. And uh, they're battery design is integrated into their chassis. So it's very difficult to just go and put a different battery in there. So right. since they're stuck with the capacity at a fixed amount, uh, the only way to get more range is improve efficiencies in other areas of the drive line. So they improve the efficiency of the motor. Yeah. Now, by any means, this is not an inefficient motor. You know, this is now a game that's played out in you know, tenths of a percent. Exactly, efficient. exactly. In order to play that range game to right. show that little right. 300 right. plus miles of range. Now when you talk about the batteries too, Right. Now, essentially, that's the motor is just the motor, but right. the power comes from the battery. Is but, that correct? So, like, how many how many volts you could push through the inverter right. is what is what makes the power in the motor. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, the energy is really derived from the battery. So that's really your energy source. Where an internal combustion, uh, it comes from the gas, but the actual energy is made within the engine, yes. right, within the cylinder. So this is a little bit different where, you know, you kind of have the energy made elsewhere, stored in the batteries, okay. and then it's basically regulated. This is essentially just a big valve, right? It's yes. allowing uh, the current, and it's more sophisticated than that. It, it has timing, advance, it has, you know, it's monitoring the temperature and the RPM and all that stuff. Uh, and it has some logic in it for the regenerative braking as well. Now the power also in the, an electric motor is essentially torque and RPM. Right. Correctly, that's how yeah. you're, that's how you're yeah. doing that. So the more voltage that you could throw through the battery to the inverter. Right. Now the inverter is what converts uh, uh, DC to AC. Right. So if we touch on what an inverter does, yes. yeah, it's it's basically changing the direct current into an alternating, alternating current, current, and at a frequency of about eight thousand times a second. You need a real high frequency to create induction. Okay. That's what that's doing. And that's what the inverter. So the so the battery, the voltage of the battery also matters, but how quickly the inverter works also right. also matters. How quickly the inverter can convert, keep up, keep up right. with the battery yeah. voltage coming through right. as well. Right. So, okay. And that's actually, that's a good point because you know microcontrollers are getting more capable. And as they get more capable, one of the problems they had with the reluctance motor was timing. And now that the microcontrollers are much faster, we've got better capability on the reluctance motor. So you're gonna see those starting to come in a little bit more mainstream. So, so this is essentially a chain with weakest links that you keep pointing out as the technology yeah, advances. Yeah, I mean, as so, a motorsports yeah, guy, so. it's fascinating. It's like the early days of any discipline because you're looking at this stuff and you see so many areas that can be improved. And that kind of gives uh, a lot of, it puts a lot of power in the hands of little builders, like small shop builders, because we have ourselves and even customers have 
come up with solutions that uh, you know are super effective, but at the same time maybe simple solutions that other people haven't thought of for driving the motor, cooling the motor, things like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's amazing the stuff that you guys are seeing that even Tesla isn't seeing. Do you ever talk to Elon's teams about anything? That they <laughs> no, we, 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 we heard through a Tesla yeah. insider that they had a meeting, they talked about us, and you know, quote unquote, Elon knows about the M3 and likes it. So. Okay, okay, so that's yeah. good. We have Elon, yeah. Elon's, you know, because he's essentially could be the modern day Bond villain, so we don't want to really make Elon mad. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, <laughs> but he seems like a pretty open source guy, you know? Yes. He seems like, um, you, you know, you look at him offering the supercharger to other companies, yep, yep, he yep. offered his patents up to other yeah. companies so uh, and, and you know they originally purchased this technology from somebody else and then use their engineering to go beyond it to the next thing so it's it's a neat model you know so now getting back into the into the motor as we go from battery to inverter right. to motor now the other thing that I heard is essentially the the rotors and the coils the, right. the tolerances of that Right. You could you could play with that because right. if you get a tighter tolerance, yeah. then you could get the motor to spin it's, faster. Right. But then as the heat expands, yes. you've got to play with that. <laughs> How does that work too? Right. So uh, everybody's played with magnets, yes. and there's almost no attraction until they get really close, and then it goes up exponentially. So this is a magnetic drive, so the same thing holds. So you want your coil, your inductive coil, which is on the outside of the motor, to be as close as you can to the rotor so that it has the strongest amount of attraction possible. Yes. But of course, you, you want to get as close to that limit with heat expansion and everything and still don't touch. So the tolerances are extremely tight. Yeah. And then also when you talked about the coils too, is there something to winding the coils too? Like how tightly the coils are wound that also affects right, that right. attraction as well? So the field coils, uh, it's kind of a function of the thickness of the wire. The thicker the wire is, it can actually handle more current but it will have less wrap, so it'll be kind of a lower voltage, yes. higher current motor. So depending on how the field is wound, we can change uh, kind of like the power band. You can uh, take a motor that has a very wide power band, let's say up to 6,000 or 7,000 RPM, but it might have less torque. You could take all those same physical elements and rewind it in a fashion that would give you maybe twice the torque, but it would drop off at say 3,000 RPM, okay. right? So it's kind of a function of volts and amps. Volts gives you your torque band. It makes it wider as yep, voltage yep, yep. goes up. And as you increase your amps, that's a linear relationship with torque. So if you have, you know, say 100 foot pounds of torque at uh, 500 amps, you'll have 200 at 1,000. So amps is essentially the flow that you're trying to get, you're right. trying to create essentially. Right. And the volts is the amount of, that you're sending right. through, the amount yeah. of electricity yeah. you're sending through. And the analogy is kind of like plumbing, you know, exactly. where, where voltage is your pressure, pressure on the pipe and then your current is actually the, the capacity, the, the capacity. volume being delivered. And the two together, the product, right, the multiplication of volts times amps gives you your watts. And that's the, the conversion for horsepower. And that's a right. that's a one kilowatt is one point three horsepower. Yeah, right? seven hundred forty six watts, watts, watts is per, a, horsepower. per horsepower. So yeah. uh, when you have something like this, you know, if you can increase the current, you're going to increase horsepower. If you're going to increase the voltage, you're going to increase horsepower. Now, and, and, and there's a little bit more tack to it than that. Yes. You know, it depends on especially your gear ratio and your final drive and what kind of speed you're trying to attain. Because we can, you know, now you have something where you can kind of change the torque curve and where it is. And in this case, this particular motor goes up to 16,500 RPM. And the torque curve holds pretty flat to, all about, to about 10,000. Mm -hmm. yeah, so your torque flat. curve is basically just this high, but then all yeah, the way across. All the way over. So, um, and, and as they say, it's the area under the curve that matters. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, so this one is a, this actual motor is a P85? Uh, so this is, well, it, we don't know the number because okay. that refers to the battery pack size. So, so when it comes to this motor, there's really just uh, three motor types in the rear of a Model S and X. And, and now there's four, right? 85, 90, or 100 right. are basically battery the capacity. amount of battery capacity right. you're getting. So, right. okay, okay. And uh, the, I think the misunderstanding there is, is because you have a bigger battery, it can actually output more current. Yes. And because of that, they can program the motor in a way to be more powerful. So yes. when you see a P100, it's got a faster time than a P85 yes. or a P90, anything lower than it. But that doesn't have to do with anything in the motor. That has so to the, do with the motor, they have a performance. Battery. Correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the motor is, is classified as a performance or a base motor. And the performance is all the same stuff, same voltage. It just runs at a higher current. Okay. Right, and then now we have uh, a smaller motor that goes all the way down to like 250 kilowatt, okay. and and now the fourth motor, the reluctance. So yeah, it's a little confusing. There's not just one Tesla motor, but I think uh, most of it we get a lot of customers that they have to have the P motor, 
without realizing that they're not even going to be able to utilize that extra 75 kilowatt because they're in an application where they're going to have to turn down the power oh, switch anyways. Yeah. Wow. Um, so now this one, with this motor, a battery, sufficient battery pack to give it the 400 horsepower standard thing. How much weight is something like that? In so that package compared to an internal combustion, like let's just say the the, the yeah, uh, E36. E36, yes. right. Oh. So uh, um, a typical formula for a car the size of an E36, you're going to use about 300 watt hours per mile. Okay. Right. And um, if you kind of extrapolate that out, we kind of do the 100 mile thing. So if you multiply that by 100, you end up with 30 kilowatt hours. Now you have a number that's relevant, right? That 30 kilowatt hour is comparable to the 85 kilowatt hour in a Tesla or the 30 yeah, okay. kilowatt hour in a, in a Nissan Leaf or something like that. So you can really kind of do the math depending on what you want to do. Like when we built the E36 origin for Pikes Peak, we had a very specialized pack that we knew when we got to the top of the mountain, we had maybe a 10% buffer, 20% buffer. And that's what most race teams plan for so they're not carrying extra weight, yep. right? And in fact, Elon even said, I, I can't imagine needing much more than 100 kilowatt hour battery because at that point you're just carrying so much extra weight when you can still recharge it pretty quick with the supercharger. So it's really finding that balance, looking at your application right now, you know, some quick formulas, 30 kilowatt hour will get you about 100 miles. Uh, a really good battery like the Tesla runs 10 to 11 pounds per kilowatt hour. So if we were to do that with the Tesla battery, you'd be 300, 350 pounds, somewhere okay. in that range okay. packaged. And then we have uh, more high performance batteries. So one of the, the common requests is I want a Tesla drive and the Tesla battery. And the Tesla battery is a very high energy battery. So it can go very far, but it has a tough time putting out high current. So it's a low voltage? It's, it's a high voltage, it's a, it's a 400 volt pack, but it can only make full current in a full pack, right? Which is about a thousand pounds. So when the pack runs a little less, right. when it's, a little, it's a little spent, it makes less power. It makes less power, but on top of that, when you uh, say you don't want to use the whole pack, you want to use a portion of it, that's going to affect the amount of current that you can run through the motor. So in performance applications, we actually don't use the Tesla battery, we use a more performance-oriented battery, in this case, the LG Kim. So this has a higher power density. So uh, six of these modules here will get us to 400 volts and full current to the motor, whereas all the, the Tesla through, side- All the way through the power cycle, right. essentially. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so you have, you know, in early in the design process, you know, is this going to be a classic vehicle? We're going to limit you at say 70 kilowatts of power and you want to be able to make it, you know, between LA and San Diego. Uh, that's a Tesla battery application. If you're doing a drift car or like the off-road truck, anything like that, that's a, a power application. You want something with more uh, power density. You know, so another way of looking at this, this is, you know, if this was a 12 volt battery, this has more cold cranking amps than that. Exactly. And that's the way I look at it. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mind, mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even greasy. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite part. <laughs>